So I know what you're saying. So basically we're just going to add and subtract two standard errors. That's boring because remember standard errors is sigma of x bar, which is sigma over the square root of n. No, we can do more than just a 95% confidence. Like I said, we can do 90 or 99%. So to begin with, we have this thing called the margin of error. So the margin of error is denoted by E, and you might have saw it in the last video. It's basically the difference between what we say is the observed mean and what we hope the true population mean can be. Yeah. And so if you think of this is our x bar, the E would be how far off from x bar we add and subtract. So basically up to this point it's been two times our standard dv standard error. Right, so we take our x bar and we subtract and then the x bar and add, right? So that's our margin of error. We see this all the time. A lot of times you'll see that MOE, that's the margin of error. So for example, Americans who've tried marijuana, 51% said today, and notice it's a margin of error of plus or minus 5 or 4%. Because CBSN did not ask me Right? Did they ask you? I don't know. Maybe. So 51% with a margin of error, that means they took 51% and you can subtract 4% and add 4% and that's how far off they are from the true percentage in this case. So it's either between 47% or 55% they think. But again, the 51% would be like the point estimate. So the intervals would look like this. We have our mean in the middle, so there's our x bar, and the margin of error is what we add and subtract to get the minimum and the maximum of our confidence intervals. So let's think about this. A confidence interval for the population mean has a length of 20. So the whole thing is 20. We know x bar is in the middle. This is 20. The length is 20. So the margin of error we know margin of error is what we add and subtract, so half of 20 would be 10. That's our margin of error. So if our sample, so sample mean is 15, and we know the margin of error is 10, to find the confidence interval, we just take 15 minus 10, and then 15 plus 10. So that would just be 5 to 25. So again, the margin of error is what we add and subtract to the mean. So again, a confidence level, remember, can be either 90, 95, or 99 percent. And if it's a 95 percent, think of 95 percent here, that means 5 percent is left over. And that's our alpha. So if it's 90 percent confidence, alpha is 10, 99, it's 1. This 1 and 5 percent, 10 percent, that is what we use to find the critical value. So the critical value is the number on the borderline separating our sample statistic from those that are unlikely to occur. And so we use z sub alpha over 2. And that's the area to the right. So alpha over 2 is to the right. And we know z scores are what's on the x-axis, the horizontal axis. So this is a better graph than what I just kind of sketched out. So again, if this was our 95% confidence, then alpha Alpha would be 5%, and then alpha over 2 would be 2.5%, and we'd want to know this z-score. If we're looking at the negative side, because there is a negative one, right? So there's a negative z sub alpha over 2, that's to the left tail. All right, so let's find those critical values. So we know alpha is 5%, if it's a 95%, so alpha over 2 is 0.025. So let's go to StatCrunch. We've done this before. We go to Stat, Calculators, Normal. Since we're dealing with Z, we know the mean is 0, standard deviation is 1, and the area is going to be 0 0.025. And we want it to the right. So we get a Z score of 1.96, basically. Right, so think of what we've done in the past. 95% has indicated two standard deviations. So we would add and subtract two um, standard errors. So basically, you can see that we kind of rounded that. 
because it should actually be 1.96 to be exactly. So we would take our mean, our x bar, and we'd add and subtract 1.96 of our standard errors to be truly certain that we're doing the correct values. So let's find some four, more, 93%, 84%, and 99%. Okay, so for 93%, that means alpha would be 1 minus 0.93, which is 0.07. That's what alpha equals. For this one, 1 minus 0.84, which is 0.16. That's what alpha would be. And of course, 1 minus 0.99 is 0.01. Now so far what we did was find alpha over 2, but we know StatCrunch has a better way of even doing this. Right, so we can go to StatCrunch and we can go to the between. And we can put, well we know we want, what was my first one? 93%, so 0.93. And that would be our z-scores, so we would add and subtract the mean and plus or minus 1.8119 standard deviations. All right, the next one, 84% confidence. Put 0.84, there's our z scores, and 0.99, it's almost three standard deviations, so 2.5758. Whoops. All right, so now. When we're finding this confidence interval estimate, it doesn't have to be 95% anymore. So the percentage doesn't have to be 95%. We already knew that our point estimate could be anything. So now we're going to use StatCrunch to find these confidence intervals. It's going to be super easy. When we know sigma, we're going to go to stat, zstats, one sample, and either we're going to choose with data or with summary. You're going to see some bullets and you want to always choose the bullet that says confidence. All right, so let's do some examples. A random sample of 28 customers at a gas station shows an average gas purchase of 8.9 gallons. And I think I'm going to write that down so I don't have to keep on going back and forth. So again, our average is 8.9. And notice that that is our x, x bar. So we have a sample of 28, and the average of that 28, so since it's a sample, it's 8.9. Assume that the number of gallons purchased is normally distributed. Fantastic. Oh, they should say, I was thinking, what is going on with a standard deviation? So it's the population is normal with a standard deviation of 3.2 gallons. So silly. So 3.2 gallons. So we want to interpret a 98% confidence interval, estimating the mean number of gallons purchased at this time. All right, so this isn't 95%, it's 98%. So here we go. I'm going to write these down really quick. Sigma is 3.2, and our confidence level is 98%. All right, here we go. Keep. We're going to go to StatCrunch. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to go to Stat, Z Stats, one sample. This time we have some summary, right? We just know X bar, we know N, we know Sigma. And that's exactly what we're going to put. So sample mean, I said, was 8.9. The standard deviation we know is 3.2. And our sample size was 28. Here's our confidence interval for the mean, and see our level, that's our confidence level, we want it to be 98%. Click Compute, and we see we get 7.4932 and 10.3068, and we're looking at these last two values. Right, and there's our standard error, there's our sample mean, how many we have, with our population standard deviation of 3.2. So 7.4932 and 10.3068. So StatCrunch automatically found X bar. It found how many standard deviations away exactly 98% was. 
and it calculated your standard error and it took your x-bar and then it subtracted your margin of error, which is awesome. So now we just have to go to stack, um, go back to our problem and interpret. And our interpretation says, we are 98% confident that the mean number of gallons purchased gallons, I guess it should say of gas purchased at the station is between and what is it between? It's between 7.4932 gallons and 10.3068 gallons. And so notice that we say how confident we are. We say what we're talking about, the mean number of gas, gallons of gas purchased. And then we state our interval. So we're saying the mean, the true mean, is somewhere between 7.4932 and 10.3068. Let's do one more. A nutritionist wants to estimate the average caloric content of the burritos at a popular restaurant. That's actually what I had last yesterday for lunch. It was so good. They obtain a random sample of 15 burritos. So N is 15, our sample, and find that the mean calories is 700. Since that's the mean of our sample, that's 700. Calories for burritos is, yay, normally distributed with a standard deviation of 50 calories. Since this is talking about all burritos, the calories for burritos, that's indicating sigma is 50. We want to interpret a 90% confidence interval. So now our confidence level is going to be 0.9. So n is 15. We found that x bar is 700. Sigma is 50. And our confidence confidence level is 0.9. So here we go. Let's go back to StatCrunch. We'll go back to the beginning. Stat, Z stats, one sample with summary. So again, our sample mean 700. Standard deviation is 50. I'm going to look because, okay, I couldn't read my own writing. Sample size is 15. And we're going to choose that confidence level. And our confidence level is 0.9. Click Compute. And we get 678.7650 and 721.2350. So here we go. Go back to this and let's interpret. We are, what are we? We are, we are 90% confident that what? The mean caloric content of burritos. That the mean caloric content of burritos is between, and it's between our two numbers that we just found, 678.765 and 721.235. Oh, there's way too ma many calories in a burrito. They're so yummy though. Okay, well, that's it. That's how we find our confidence in intervals using StatCrunch, right? And so now we don't have to worry about adding and subtracting and making sure the order of operations is all correct. All we have to do is know where to go. Stat, Z stats, yay stats.